So let's talk about the AED or the defibrillation. Remember, you got about two minutes. You've got all different kinds. You've got some that gives you voice pumps, some that are automatic. I mean, you just put the pads on. You still have to put the pads on and turn the thing on, but that's it. Most of them are semi-automatic defibrillators where you end up having to push the button. But we'll work with the semi-automatic defibrillators. On the ambulance, if you get someone that's in cardiac arrest and they're in V-fib, maybe the uh, EMS crews will let you defibrillate them. There's an AED portion to the monitor. So you, you're able to use the AED portion even on the advanced monitor. So maybe they'll let you do that. So when you get, the, when you get it, turn it on. It'll start giving you voice commands. It'll take some time to uh, self-check itself. The next thing that you want to do after you turn it on is plug in, attach the, attach the pads. There's a picture on the pad so you can't get them confused. You put one up here in the upper right, one down here on the side. You want the pads in the correct position. This particular mannequin that I have forces you to put the pads in the right condition. It has like a little LED light that will not let you go on any further until you put the pads in the correct position, so it's, it's good. You get the pads in the correct position and then plug the, plug the cables in. So it's not very difficult. If you lose your track, there's pictures. Right? So AEDs are very, very simple to use. But you guys will understand the process a lot more. So once you attach it, it needs time to analyze the rhythm. It will only shock, remember, V fib or V tat. Now, here's, here's, never say never, right? Because I wasn't present, but we're, uh, the first responders went out, they attached the AED, and it was, because this guy, they thought this guy was going to go into cardiac arrest. And they attached the AD, and it was telling them the shock. But the guy was looking at them. And they, they, he was verbal. He was talking to them. So fortunately, they just didn't go off of, oh, they want you to shock. Right? So use some, some common sense. If the patient's alert, the patient has a pulse, don't shock them. You know, it's a malfunction with the machine. But we'll stick to more of the norm. So you got the... Pads up, you got plugged in, you got it turned on. It's analyzing, make sure that you stay clear, that you don't move the patient. It can pick up that rhythm uh, as, you, as you go through. So let it analyze, and then once it analyzes, it's going to direct you to shock if it's a shockable rhythm. If it's not a shockable rhythm, what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to start CPR. So no shockable rhythm, start CPR. Because we've already checked and they don't have a pulse, right? So we know that they're in cardiac arrest. So that's what it will prompt you to do. If it, will, if it shocks, what it will prompt you to do is to immediately begin two minutes of CPR. So it's going to shock and it's going to say begin CPR. The only time that you would not do that, if you shocked and all of a sudden the patient became, you know, you, the patient uh, came back and he's like, you know, moaning or you, you see signs of life, you check a pulse and there's a pulse. Any other time you would immediately start CPR because of that coronary perfusion pressure. You shock them, no change, start CPR all right, for two minutes. The machine will time you. At the end of two minutes, it's going to say, stop CPR, and it's going to reanalyze the rhythm. So two minutes or five cycles of CPR after the uh, after it shocks. The voice commands are great here if you lose track on, on what to do. So if the AD, like we've already talked about, the AD is not close, start CPR. Get the AED. Uh, you got to bear the chest. Uh, to, sort of like someone already brought up. You know? But the uh, get bear the chest. Get the shirt out of the way. And it's not one of these things. You know that this guy is ripping the shirt. You have you got time here. Okay, you have a hundred dollar shirt on. Well, it's 
sorry, but it's not worth anything. It's not worth that time. So you get the shirt out of the way. EMS guys usually carry trauma shears, which will cut pennies in half. So they're sharp. Typically what will happen is they'll just pick up the shirt and run the shears in the middle of the shirt to get it out of the way. If it's female, they'll just cut the bra off as well and, and get it out of the way. You don't waste time on the, on the clothes. Clothes are not that important when you're talking about something life-threatening. If they're sweaty, make sure they're dry before you put the, the pads on, right? Get a towel, dry them off. Look at the pads. Make sure you get the pads in the correct position. It's easy enough. Peel back the, the thing. Let it analyze like we've already talked about. And then delivering the shock uh, once everybody's clear. So what you do, you put the pads on. This monitor is going to tell you uh, charging, the bells don't go off, push the shock, push the shock. You're going to say, before you shock, that you don't look at the patient, you're here, and you're going to say, okay, I'm shocking, I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear, you don't look at the patient, and then you're going to push the, the shock button. In, in your testing scenario, if you don't clear yourself and clear your others, then you're, you're going to fail. You automatically fail that that station. So you want to make sure you're clear and everybody else is clear before you push the shock button. Because if you're touching that, it's going to shock you and potentially kill you. As soon as it's done, just like we just said, resume CPR, shock not indicated. That means the patient's not in a shockable rhythm. They may be in a asystole or PEA, the other different rhythms there uh, that you could be in that's not shockable. Again, after the two minutes, you're, you're going to reanalyze. Every two minutes or five cycles, you're going to stop and, and reassess. So we'll, look, we'll hook this AED up here in just a second and, and, and show you what I mean. If the patient responds to you, they get a pulse back, they're not breathing, what do you do? Breathe for them. If they're breathing, pulse back, they're breathing, recovery position, correct? Children, pretty much the same way. However, most children don't go into V-fib. They go straight into asystole. That's one of the, the problems with children in cardiac arrest. But the, the sequence is essentially the same. You want to make sure, see the pictures on the pads? They're little people. They look like kids, little kid drawing, right? Or they're, say, pediatric on the outside of them, or some of them will be pink. So you want to make sure that you have the, the correct pads. You notice here, however, the pad goes, this particular model, the pad goes in the middle, and then on the back, you sandwich. You put one in the middle and one on the back. Uh, that just depends on the model of the fibrillator you have. Some of them will still put them up here and here. So it depends on the pad and, and, and the model of AED that you have. So the steps are the same. Start CPR. AED gets there. Attach the AED. Make sure the pads are in the correct position. Advise to shock, make sure everybody's clear, shock, and then once you shock, resume CPR. If the child responds, then go ahead and put the child in the recovery position. If you start having trouble with the AED, most of the time, the problem with the AED is you don't have the cables plugged in correctly. The other thing is, is that the battery, maybe they did poor maintenance and the battery's not up there. You can't really do anything about the battery. But if there's a trouble and it's not working, then step back, look at it, think about it, and then just re-go re back through the process. Restart the process. Look at what you're doing. And unless something's wrong with the machine itself, then 
uh, more than likely you can figure it out. Make sure the pads are firmly on the chest. If there's a little dimple in the pad where they're not firmly flat, it can arc. That's a lot of electricity going through there. So uh, the physio control guy told me it's about 10 amps of electricity. So that's a lot. So it can arc. You have that pad bubbled up and it can arc. One, it can burn the patient, but even worse than that, it can blow up the machine. I've seen monitors that have, uh, defibrillators that have been blown up by water and, and, and different things. So make sure those pads are firmly placed down. Then you get the old hairy chest guys. Uh, a lot of the ADs, especially in the ambulance, they have a razor. And it's not one of these things where you put the shaving cream on and you, you, know, you try to give them a nice good square cut, right? It's take the razor and go. Like a dry shave? Yeah. These kind of razors, the special razors designed for this, they actually have a comb in it. They flatten the hair and you just raise it. That's all right. You're going to nick them and cut them. It's no big deal. You can't put those pads on all the hair. It'll stand up. It won't adhere to the chest wall tight enough. And you're going to end up arcing the, the pad. you got to get the chest hair out of the way. And uh, it's, it's not that difficult. It's a little nasty, but it's not, it's not that difficult when you look at shaving their chest. And you're just shaving the area where you're going to place the pad to get good adherence to the pad. Make sure that you don't have any movement of the patient, the monitor, or the cables. It can indicate the, a false thing. And, and like I was telling you earlier, it could start its sequence to shock because it may be seeing uh, V-fib. The batteries, you know, on the cardiac monitor, on the amulets, you always replace the batteries. You're responsible for that. Here, uh, I believe the nurse would check the batteries every day or has a schedule on checking the, checking the batteries. All right, so wet surfaces, we've already spoken of that. They've got to get up off the wet surfaces, the metal surfaces. That water will, will electrocute everybody in the area that's in there. So you've got to get them up, get them dried off. Uh, I would get them completely up off the wet surface. This, you know, this little picture here shows them up under a backboard, but if their arm falls off or something, they can still conduct that electricity. You have to get them up and off the surfaces. Someone like a, a drowning or something in a swimming pool, it's going to be a problem. I mean, you've got a lot of drying to do. Everything's wet around there. So there's some situations where you, you've got to think about what you're doing and say, oh man, a pool, great. So we got to get some towels and get them dried off. Make sure that the water doesn't all of a sudden start running. You, you're about to uh, shock them and the water starts to drip across their chest and connects the two pads together because the, the monitor will blow up. Same way with metal surfaces. On the implanted devices like a, an AED, I mean an implantable AED or a pacemaker, you just would not put the uh, device over that. So if you had a pacemaker up here in your chest, the, the chest wall, you just wouldn't put the pad over it. And then the internal defibrillators are like a little box down here in the abdomen. You just wouldn't put the uh, pads over the top of that. It's okay to... Put them around it, just don't put it on top. And you'll be able to see it. Here it says at least an inch away. Make sure that you keep the pads off there. Same way with medication patches, like a nitro patch. You just take it off, actually. Just take the pad, patch off, but you don't want to put the defibrillating pads on top of there. Make sure you use a glove. You have gloves on anyway. But make sure you put a glove, you touch that nitro, and it's going to absorb into your hands. And then you'll get the side effects of nitro as well.